Good morning, brother. Uh, thank you for the uh, the uh, advice on the the information on the, the tomatoes. Um, good to know I can still eat them. They're looking um, looking better. The, that first day they or first little while they're very uh, matte and finished and had that uh, bunched up looking. Uh, you know, lumpy, wrinkled kind of shape, but they're starting to get a little sheen to them, and and uh, I'm looking forward to them uh, following their path of life until they eventually end up in my belly. <laughs> um, yeah, so I looked into, uh, I listened into that that message um, follow me perfectly secure uh, basically I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure out where I left off uh, in the Matthew series the the follow me series Lord willing um, the next time I get an opportunity to preach uh, that's where it'll be from continuing on there um, but yeah, I mean, I really appreciate what the, uh, Spirit of God said in that message. Um, I'm thankful for the, the timing of the message, uh, for the, for those that received it. I'm, I'm overjoyed that, that God would allow this, um, this group of, uh, certainly Pentecostal leaning um, Christians I believe to um, to hear eternal security of course I've had discussions on it beforehand and, and uh, based on the pastor's uh, testimony I wouldn't I wouldn't expect him to have any qualms about about eternal security um, or trusting in Christ alone but all the same, uh, you know, the Lord had it that way back when I first opened up Matthew and wanted to do a two or three part <laughs> series on Follow Me and was shocked to find out that the whole book is is exhorting Christians to follow him, despite what the commentators have said. You know, typically that, that it's, it's a book all about convincing Jews or, or whatever. I've even heard people go as far as to say that Matthew was originally written in Hebrew, just to that end. But no, I uh, am amazed that I I chose to get into that sermon series, and then uh, to the end that uh, I'm standing in this this brand new church in front of this brand new group of people with a uh, with. Um, thousands of subscribers potentially that could listen um, being able to preach from the rich young ruler <laughs> the uh, security that a believer has being assured that he's in the hands of Christ and uh, in the father's hands subsequently and that he will never perish as a result of God's preserving power on him. That's amazing. I mean, because that is that is one of the the pillars of Pentecostalism is is, is you know you got to work for yourself and you got to earn it. You can't just you, know, you can't just do nothing. <laughs> you know they they're. They're big on, on the works. And uh, glory to God, they heard the true gospel that day. So yeah, we're uh, certainly looking forward to the day that we get to come, come and visit you and, and share the gospel in your city, your town, your village. I, uh, was in 
church yesterday, of course. That is my manor is. And we preach from uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 18 through 20. On, uh, on Zechariah and that, that miracle that was revealed to him by the angel. And uh, we find Zechariah when he hears uh, the promise that he would be the father of a child immediately in doubt and, and unbelief. Um, his, his unbelief um, Pastor mentioned was was three things. That it was primarily it was an unreasonable unbelief. It was an unacceptable unbelief. And it was unfortunate his unbelief. Now we remember that the message to Zechariah was literally from heaven. The messenger Gabriel says, I am Gabriel who stand in the presence of God. And so, then it, it's quite unreasonable <laughs> to a, a man who was a priest Potentially a, a a high priest, given his 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 duty in the course of Abaya to offer incense. I don't know that for sure, but I believe that was one of the duties of the high priest. So next to the altar of incense, he finds an angel from heaven, an angel who had moments before stood in the presence of God revealed to him you're going to have a child and immediately unreasonably doubt sets in from Zechariah we're old well stricken in years look we've come to accept we're not going to have children you know this is impossible the you know the manner of women has left my wife and, and I'm old and you know it's it's impossible nobody has conceived at this age nobody has carried at this age it, it just it doesn't work that way God and he's immediately smitten with dumbness I think we too, when we unreasonably deny the Word of God, don't accept the Word of God, and don't believe the Word of God, we just end up looking dumb, don't we? We end up being dumb. <laughs> of course, I'm stretching that language a little bit. <clears throat> but think also of the believer. When we neglect the Word of God, when we put off hearing the Word of God, <clears throat> How can we speak it? The disciples said, We cannot cease but to speak those things that we have heard. And if we're not actively hearing God's word, our faculties to speak God's word will leave us off real quick. And we say it's unreasonable for Zacharias, get this, to reject the word of Gabriel who came from the presence of God, bearing the word of God. How unreasonable for him to not believe that. And like we do with most of the Bible characters when they fail before us. 
We're really hard on them and critical. I'm a believer today. Doesn't the great apostle Peter remind us that we have a more sure word of prophecy? For unto ye do well to take heed, and unto a light that shineth in dark places, till the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. It's unreasonable to reject the word of an angel that just came from God. Ah, but it's even more unreasonable to reject the word of the Lord that sits dusty on your shelf. That sits dusty in your vehicle. That sits dusty in your pocket, in your cupboard, in your closet. How many words of God do you have in your house that go neglected? Now that's unreasonable. To be an unbelief towards the Word of God in this day, in this hour, in this nation, where it is so readily available to you. It was unreasonable because Gabriel brought the word of God from heaven. It was also unreasonable for unbelief to be given towards the word of God in this case because the message came while he was in the house of God. Look, he's in the house of God bringing incense uh, by type the prayers of the saints before the presence of God and I don't know if it's just because he got swept up in the mundane and the ritual of it all and in the course of Ob Abaya, of the, the manner of Abaya, of the just, just doing the to-dos. But he stands in the presence of God, in the house of God, and he hears the word of God and he responds with unbelief. It's no wonder he was punished so harshly. Look. The Apostle Peter heard the voice of God thunder from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And he saw Christ transfigured before him. And he said, we have a more sure word of prophecy over here. If God spared not those that rejected him in the days of old, and they heard the thunder from the mountaintop, how much more... Shall he not spare you when you reject his word from his son, from his ministering angel, from his messenger? Especially when you go to the house of God to hear the word of God, bringing your prayers and the prayers of all saints before him, and he heeds your response and you deny it. Oh, no. The place where truth ought to be heard and trusted. I wonder how many times Christians stand in the house of God before God and hear the word and deny it. Don't offer trust to it and don't believe in it. Being dumb for that length of time was indeed a sore punishment. But his unbelief was unreasonable. I think the punishment was certainly reasonable from God Almighty. And truly, it's unacceptable for Christians today, if they even dare to, congregate, if they dare to go to the assembly, it's unacceptable for them to have unbelief towards what's being preached. So the punishment to Zechariah is, you're dumb and you're going to be dumb for a while. How many Christians have no testimony, have no words of ministry, have no 
words of faithfulness and truth to offer because they're dumb, because they have rejected the Word of God in unbelief, which is completely unacceptable. What unbelief does is it has the audacity to essentially call God a liar. Men's old pride and arrogancy causes us to hear the Word of God, sure, but not heed the Word of God. We don't hearken to it. Our pride and our arrogancy causes us to refuse to act upon the Word of God when it comes to us. And truly that is unacceptable. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but wouldn't your purpose for turning on a sermon, wouldn't your purpose for opening the Word of God, wouldn't your purpose for going to, to the house of God be to hear the Word of God? So we ought to be more like the Bereans, receive the word of the readiness of mind, search the scriptures daily to find out whether those things were so, but receive it nonetheless, with a, with a believing spirit about us. I do think it's unacceptable for me to hear the word of God and just, oh, that's not for me, oh, that, that doesn't apply, oh, I, I, don't, I don't think that's, that's true. I need to be more faithful in my approach to the Word of God. And honestly, I need to begin to remove other influences that deter me from that. Look, we can read many good books by many good authors, and we can hear many good um, you know, lectures from, from many good thinkers, men better than us, from times past. But if these influencers and these 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 thinkers and these um, theologians and these, you know, if, if they begin to drive a wedge between us and just pure Bible, we got a problem here. And maybe this was Zechariah's problem. Zechariah and his wife for years had, had sought to the council, had counseled with, with doctors perhaps, and they, they're wondering why they're infertile, and they, they, they cons consulted with the nutritionist and, and was given all these different things that they could eat in order to produce fertility, and they, they discussed with, with uh, family and friends, and all of these, these other voices came to them, and ultimately the the bitter end of those voices, perhaps even their own reasoning and their minds, was what caused them to, cause Zechariah, anyways, to go to the house of God, next to the altar of God, to hear from the angel of God, the very word of God, and say, I don't, I don't believe that. How shall that be? I think we do well these days to to delete our other influences, to remove them from our from our our thoughts, to to to, to push them away. Look, I, I can look at myself and I can see that I'm the product of all those that have influenced me. And you know what? I do praise the Lord for the influences that were positive. But how many also in these past 10, 11, or 12 years or whatever it's been since, since I first believed, how many of these influencers have, have ingrained in me this idea of religion that I am today and over the past several months now fighting with. And to the saved Christian, I don't care if your foundations were Catholic, Baptist, Reformed, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Mormon, I don't care what your past influences were, if they are 
driving a wedge between you and just pure faith in the pure Word of God, then it's a problem and it's unacceptable. And when that religiosity, that, that mindset of, of, of practice and principle before pure faith towards God, that pure religion, which is faith in Christ, well, if you're putting man-made religion at the forefront of your focus, then don't be surprised that you're dumb and you're gonna be dumb for a while. At times I feel like that, that that I have I have nothing to say because because my my religious past has 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 truly blocked out my words. It's it's an awful thing. And I hope this isn't misunderstood, but it's an awful thing when when you go to somebody and, and you see they need help and you try to minister to them, but all you have to offer them is Baptist religion. Well, if you would just get to church on Sunday, if you would just you know, quit smoking and chewing and drinking. If you would just put on a tie once in a while, if you would just, oh, Lord have mercy. See what I mean? It's unacceptable for us to be in that state of unbelief. When we get there, I believe when we let other influences stand between us and, and the pure word of God. And it's ultimately unfortunate because it, it, it's really it's really lacking. It's 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 it, it's it's a less than. It's it's <laughs> it's it's phony and counterfeit. It, it's awful. For a Christian to walk in unbelief. It's unreasonable that we would reject the Word of God. It's, it's, it's unacceptable that we would reject the Word of God. And we, we deserve any, any punishment that, that might come as a result of that, truly. The, 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 the punishment, the correction would be a blessing because it would lead me to the truth. And it's unfortunate. I think it's unfortunate not just just for 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 me, the believer, but for everybody else. In Zechariah's case, he 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 had a ministry that he could no longer fulfill as a result of his unbelief. He wouldn't be able to teach and preach and correct. He wouldn't be able to instruct. He wouldn't be able to lead about his family and friends in the same manner. Because he's dumb. Because he didn't believe God. You know what? I'm dumb when I don't believe God. Christians don't need to live in the realm of, of what we can see we will believe. And that, that's for the world. I'll believe it when I see it. Well, you know what? Christians see him who is invisible. Christians experience the love which passeth all understanding. Christians know what cannot be known. Ephesians 3 discusses that at length. Christians can have complete confidence in something that nobody can nobody can contemplate. Why? Well, it's not because we've we've ascended to some philosophical level. It's not because of our long meditations and gazing at our own navel. It's because of the faith that we've placed in, ah, the Word of God. <laughs> and faith comes by hearing, and hearing only by the Word of God. 
I think that's where we need to get to as believers. Get, get back to the foundations of opening the scriptures, seeing what it says, not adding to, not taking away with the pen or with our own thoughts or with our own influences or with our own, you name it. What an unfortunate thing for us to have that more sure word of prophecy in our possession and yet every time we open it, open it with some bias. Every time we open it, open it with, with some commentator in hand. Every time we open it, open it with, with some, some uh, you know, something. Our religion, our experience. Our know-how, our knowledge, our science. When God comes to us in the plain word of God and says, you're going to conceive, you're going to have a child. Well, science says that's not possible. My textbook says, uh-uh. The commentator says that what that really means is, well, I've opened my, my lexicon and I've, I've figured out that this, this verse would be better rendered as, why can't we just open the Word of God and hear the Word of God and heed the Word of God and love the Word of God and embrace the Word of God and let the Word of God tell us what the Word of God means and let the Word of God change us? That's what I need. I don't need to go to the Word and change the Word. I need the Word to change me. I don't need to go to the Word and add to the Word and take away from the Word. I need to go to the Word of God and have it add to me and take away from me. I don't need some commentator to tell me what the Word of God means. I need the Word of God to tell me where the what the commentator ought to have said, what I need to understand from what's been written. Zacharias doubted God's Word and he ended up looking dumb to everybody around him. Not only looking dumb, he ended up being dumb. It was unreasonable for him to not believe the word that came from the angel. It was unacceptable for him to have the audacity to call God a liar and refuse to act upon his word. And it's unfortunate the end of those that refuse to see him who is invisible, to experience the love which passeth all understanding, to know what cannot be known, and to just simply give their faith to the word of God. Personally, I say to myself, I have the Word of God. I know this is the Word of God. I'm trusting that this is my Bible. But am I believing it? Am I receiving it? I need to remind myself, if I'm not, it's unreasonable, it's unacceptable, and it's unfortunate for me to do so. Lord, help us as believers to put a simple childlike faith into your scriptures. Trust this message receives you well, brother. Have a good day.